condition, we could hold them to these performance standards and we could really do a much better job getting the services we need. Good idea. So we started down this path. Notice, I'm back in 1999. Bleeding edge. We were the first agency or one of the first to outsource and somebody said, um, didn't you look at Eastman Kodak's experience in the mid-90s? I don't know, I wasn't a thud when they started this, but obviously not. Um, so in 1999, this approach is conceptualized. For those in the security business, what do we know about security or care about security in 1999? No, we didn't. Yes, did. At EPA, oh, yeah. we served. I mean, I'm not there. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I, so, in the financial world, they actually might have understood firewalls. Where I was, firewalls? GAO called our firewall a fire log. At a public meeting. Yes, we were. Yes, we were. And it was fine. <laughs> and I'm not sure HUD is completely off token right now. Um, did the research in 2000, again, think security in 2000. This was when GAO, GAO first stood up their first white hat team back here. How do I know that? EPA was the first one to undergo a white hat team inspection. We failed, gloriously. Um, Industry Day in 2002, the RFPs released in 2000, 2002, and the award is made in 2003. So anytime you're doing something this big, it takes a while. And then this happened. We had a very public protest. The incumbent didn't win. The incumbent expected to win. The incumbent had been in charge for 10, 15 years. And the incumbent is very big, very strong, and has a very, very good congressional lobbying team. Six months later, on January 20th, I believe it was the day the president was inaugurated, our protest ended. Congress solved our problem for us. You never want Congress to solve the problem. You don't want a judge or Congress to solve your problem. We had two contractors, so we split the baby down the middle. The guy who won the award and the income. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's not <laughs> And it's a 10 year fixed price, billion dollar IDIQ with performance incentives. It's a 10 year fixed price contract. It is a very big number divided by 10. Very big number divided by 10. Split between two contractors who don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> no, that's, 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 this is HUD. I wasn't there yet. Oh, okay. uh, this wasn't HUD <laughs> yet. EPA is now going to seven contractors talking to each other. Um, so in looking back, so, so we know, we know we were bleeding edge at the time. We really were. Nobody else was doing this. Nobody else took this big an approach. And I got to tell you, it probably would have worked out much better had we had one prime. The fact that we ended up with two and it was done by Congress. I mean, <coughs> I gotta tell you, that's that's probably the bane of our existence. Um, we really did, we were bleeding edge. We so we know what it's like to make mistakes on cloud computing, because that's really what this was. It was a cloud computing effort. We wanted to outsource. Um, so we know what not to do <laughs> if you can avoid protests. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. Talk to GSA. So go to bed. Um, I wish they were up and running. So, you know, we really did try and do the right thing, uh, but oof. So we're dealing with it on a daily basis. Um, and where was information security? I actually went back and read where information security was. Um, the only real information security nugget that was included in this contract was disaster recovery. And that was explicitly pulled out, explicitly required. HUD does transactions. We do millions of transactions every day. We are 24-7, 365. 
we needed mainframes that ran 24-7, 365, and so disaster recovery was absolutely understood and included. Um, the rest of it, we just figured they'd give us whatever. You know, best practices. These guys know what they're doing. After all, you got two big system integrators. You got Lockheed Martin and EDS. Those were our two kind of <laughs> two big <laughs> system integrators, right? They should know what you what they're doing. Friendly. Yeah. Oh, and they don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So, and federal information technology standards and requirements did not yet exist. Think about this. So, FISMA gets passed in 2002. Yeah, you have GISRA. Then you have FISMA, and FISMA directs NIST to develop the standards. So when was the first publication of 853, the oh. details? 2003, 2004, oh. something like that? So they don't exist. You know, and i got to tell you, these guys, they didn't even want to do CNA. And CNA has existed since 1987. Oh, yeah. I mean, this was not new, but so it really wasn't built in. So, I need your help, because now, as you saw, it's now 2010, 10-year fixed price contract, very big number divided by 10, it's 2010, the contract expires in 2014. Actually, it's going gonna, it's gonna to end sooner than that, because we've spent more money than we anticipated. Well, we, okay. yeah. just one lesson more, and I'm going to tell you, if you have an IT contract, it is not a fixed amount, big number, divided by number of years. It's just not. You don't, it's not stable. <laughs> and if you think about the business that we're in, we insure how, we insure mortgages. What did we have over the last couple of years? And who is now the primary insurance agent for all of the housing market? So you know what our transactions did? They jumped by two thirds. <laughs> so we've got it, and we still have an aging infrastructure. We have a big old Unisys mainframe that was just upgraded this year. Big old Unisys. Is, is that in HUD, or is that in a? It's it's Fine. at our data center. That's okay. owned by it's in that's owned by HP. Oh, okay. Okay, we have two big mainframes. Owned by HP. Yeah, but this is this is a security company to, for security services. No, 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 no. Security just happened. They have it's to. It's just be part of it. Security was a very minimal part of it. Not general. <clears throat> actually, I, I got to tell you, for all the bad things I say, they actually do a pretty good job given the dysfunctionality of the contract. The contract is really awful. The services we get are not bad given the dysfunctionality. The problem is, we didn't include some of the stuff that we now know has to be included. So, here's the question I have, or questions I have for you guys. What do we need to do this time to ensure that security assessments are performed? That contingency plan test, you know that item we have to report on? We don't have to report on that anymore, so maybe they're off the hook. But that we have to report on every year. Um, and how do we make sure they're implementing continuous monitoring? So what does that mean and how do we make sure? So I'm throwing it out to you guys. Well, the continuous monitoring, I mean, it's, it, again, actually, I don't know if you have a, a leg to stand on as far as they can do security testing periodically in a variety of ways, network scanning, uh -huh. um, web application, one of those scanning, that kind of bit, mm -hmm. and having a portal or something available to you to be able to see the results. And so that if you have, you know, ability to get access and visibility into the status of the scan results, uh, either summarized or the actual reports themselves, you have some evidence that they're doing mm -hmm. it then, and you have some, hopefully, some okay. near real-time access to the results. What's my incentive 